welcome to another episode of SCFG Live, Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah from Science Club for Girls, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Very nice, Mr. Music. It's so great to see everyone. It's been two weeks since we last saw each other for our Oceans episode. We learned so much during that episode. We talked about how ocean and salt water uh, is denser than fresh water and makes things easier to float. And we also saw how sharks have a oily liver that helps them to stay in the middle of the ocean column. We also talked to experts, Marianne and Amy, about their work with working with oceans and working with sharks. I'm so excited to learn more today about science. And let's check in with Dr. Marbles and see what he's been up to since we last talked. Hey, Hannah! Hey, Dr. Marbles, I love those goggles! Oh, what guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I was wearing them! I've been wearing these goggles all summer! What have you been doing with those goggles? It's funny, if you don't pay attention, you forget you had them on. They're so light and ergonomic. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> have you been doing a lot of swimming, Dr. Marbles? I, you know, I have, Hannah. I've been swimming in some of the oceans, and I've been swimming. I, you know, I just love to swim. That's awesome. Very and I heard you were talking about sharks. I was. Well, last week we were... Two weeks ago, we had on our expert Marianne and learned all about, oh, shark. Dr. Marbles, there's a shark near you. Do you know that? What? There, there was definitely a shark on the screen. Everyone, you saw that, right? Hold on, let me go down. Hold on a sec. Okay. Be careful. Hmm. I don't see him down here, Hannah. Are you sure you saw a shark? He was definitely there. Right, guys? I don't know. I don't see him. All right, Dr. Marbles, let's keep an eye out on that. Okay. Actually, we should all be keeping an eye out because there's actually been, wait, there's a shark right there! Where, where? Oh my God, Dr. Marbles, a little worried about you over there. All right, well, Dr. Marbles, I was gonna say that there's actually been a lot of shark sightings recently, especially in Cape Cod and I guess in your living room too. What's really cool about these shark sightings though is that they've actually been tracked by the, Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's tracker called Sharktivity. This is where Marianne works and they're doing some great work by helping to track these shark sightings and warn people about shark presence. Ah, that's important work. It is. And it's well, also- It just really underscores the importance of check the signs exactly. before you go swimming. Just check the sign, make sure it's safe and you should be great. Exactly, and maybe check your living room too, Dr. Marbles, because there might be a shark in there as well. You're crazy, Hannah. <laughs> now, do you know what else, Dr. Marbles, is really cool? Is that not only are sharks and other marine animals really important to our ocean's ecosystems, but there are other living organisms too, like seaweed and kelp and also seagrass. Hey, Hannah, you want to hear something crazy? Yeah, I do. Not only do I like finding seaweed when I'm snorkeling and I'm going in the water, but get ready for this. What's that? I like to eat seaweed. <gasps> no way! Yeah! You know, in certain cultures, like um, when I have Japanese food and some different Asian foods, they have, they often have seaweed along with it. It's like a salad and it is delicious and it's healthy. That's awesome. Well, yeah. it's also a really important plant for many of our sea creatures. That's right. Now, these things are called plants because they actually make their own food. So you and I have to eat things, right, in order to get energy. Yeah. But plants can actually make their own food and get energy from that. Really? Isn't that cool? Yeah, totally cool. I want to hear more. Yeah, well, this process of making their own food is known as photosynthesis, and it's a really complicated word, but we're gonna break it down today, Dr. Marbles. Hey, Hannah. Yeah? I'm just gonna take a second and take these goggles off because I can't see a thing. Yeah, please do, and we'll call you back in a second. <laughs> Thanks. So again, photosynthesis is the process that plants go through to make their own food. And for photosynthesis, there's three really important ingredients that plants need. The first is sunlight. 
In fact, the photo, P-H-O-T-O, -O, at the beginning of the word photosynthesis means light. It's a great way to remember. The other thing that plants need is water. And that's why if you have a flower plant or any kind of plant in your house, it's really important to remember to water it. It's why it's also important to have those rain showers to water our grass and trees outside. And the last ingredient that plants need for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide. Now, the cool thing about carbon dioxide is every time you take a breath out, you're releasing carbon dioxide into the air. And plants take that in and use it for this photosynthesis process to make their own food. Now, today, we're going to talk about each ingredient in photosynthesis and do an experiment for each one. Now, I also forgot to mention something cool. This food that I'm talking about that plants make is called glucose. And glucose is basically just sugar. That's what plants use for energy. All right, time to talk about ingredient number one, and that's water. Super important, and always important to remember to water your plants. Now, I've always wondered, hmm, well, I know that when you water plants, you pour the water at the base of the plant, right, in the soil. But how does that water get up to the tippy top of the plants, all the way up to the leaves? Well, in today's experiment, we're gonna find out. All right, for this first experiment, you're gonna need a few things. The first, celery. You're gonna need some celery, because it's a plant and it's cool to experiment with. The second thing you're gonna need is a glass of water. The third thing you're gonna need is some food coloring, and you'll also need some patience too, and I'll talk about that. All right, so the first thing to do is to add your food coloring to your water. It's important to use a dark colored food coloring, like blue, so it works extra well. You're gonna wanna put about 10 to 15 drops of food coloring. Make it really saturated. Lots of food coloring in there. All right, give that a mix with a spoon. Perfect. All right, now it's time to prepare our celery. You might want an adult to help you with this step because it's gonna involve a sharp knife. Choose a celery stalk that has leaves because this will help us see the effect of plants using water. You'll wanna cut off the bottom of the celery, like so. All right, we have a nice flat bottom and we're ready to put it in our water. All right, now's where the patience comes in. You're gonna wanna wait about one full day before you start to see some results. So set it aside, go have fun, and check back on it soon. Now, before I show you the one that I prepared yesterday, let's check in with Dr. Marbles to predict what we're going to see in our celery. Prediction! This is my favorite, favorite prediction chart! Uh, enough. <laughs> All right, so you want me to predict what's gonna happen with the celery? That's right. Okay, here's my thought. Okay. It's going to need water. True. We know that's one of the ingredients. So I think like a straw, that celery is just going to slurp up the water. And as a result, it's going to bring up some of the blue color. So I think the celery is going to turn blue. What? You just like noses. Oh, uh, are you ready? Yeah. Let's take a look. Here's the celery that I prepared about one day ago. Take a close look at those leaves. What do you see? It's blue. It's blue! <laughs> it's blue! Let's remember what our first celery looked like. Nice green leaves. Probably. And now blue! It's blue! Dr. Marbles, what do you think this means? I think that the water started to go up into the, well, let me say it differently. I think the celery mm. brought water in through its system so it could do photosynthesis. That's great. Isn't that so cool? You would never think that something like celery is a living thing that would use water just like we as humans use water. I agree. You know, Hannah, I was almost tempted to say that nothing was gonna happen. 
Were you really? I was. I was a little skeptical too. Now we can also check a couple of other parts of the celery to see this in progress. So let's look at the bottom of the celery. What do you notice at the bottom of the celery, Dr. Marbles? Hmm. Some of the areas are have a little bit darker blue areas. That's right. In fact, do you see these little holes that kind of look like they're forming on the celery? Yeah. Well, those holes are actually called xylem. And those are like the pipes in the celery that work to move the water all the way up to the leaves. The celery has pipes? Yeah, kind yeah. of like a straw pretty much, or like the veins in our body. Yeah, it's like, it's like flowers have their own plumbing system. That's exactly right. Now, let's cut into the celery and see if we see anything there. Okay. Careful. Yep. Still see those holes, that xylem traveling all the way up, and that was halfway through the celery. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, really cool. Now, this works also in trees. So if you go outside and see a huge tree, it's functioning in a very similar way to our teeny little celery. So the pipes are the way that the plant, in this case the celery, get things from the bottom to the top. That's exactly right. Take a look at this. Here's another picture that shows exactly what happens, right? Those trees take up the water that's in the ground through their roots. The xylem carries the water all the way up to the leaves. And then actually, you wanna know something even cooler? Yeah. Once the water hits the leaves, it actually evaporates into the air. We talked about evaporation in our very first episode. Water changes from a liquid to a gas. Wow, I remember that. It's really cool. All right. So Dr. Marbles, that was the first ingredient in photosynthesis, water. It's time to talk about the second ingredient, so I'll bring you back soon. Great. Bye. All right, we talked about water. Now it's time to talk about our second ingredient, carbon dioxide. Now remember, carbon dioxide is really cool because it's what we breathe out and plants breathe in. Now, the concept of a breathing plant might sound a little bit silly right now, but I can actually show you a plant breathing. For this, you'll need some super simple ingredients. The first thing you'll need is a leaf. Leafs are really important in this because we need to show that leaves breathe. So the best thing to do for gathering a leaf is to pick a leaf off of the tree. Only pick off one leaf because we want that tree to keep growing. So nice leaf. You'll also need a bowl of water. A clear bowl works really well because you can see things happening. To hold the leaf down in the bowl of water, Grab yourself a little rock from outside too. All right, this experiment couldn't be easier. All you're gonna do, put the leaf in the bowl of water, put the rock on top, so it weighs it down and fully submerges that leaf. And then you're gonna need some patience too. You wanna put your bowl of water and leaf outside in the sun. This way, photosynthesis can happen. Wait about a day to see some results. Let's take a look at my leaf that I've left outside for a day. Now, I'm going to use a different camera so I can really zoom in on the leaf. If you look extra carefully, what do you see on our leaf? Hmm. I'm kind of starting to see some bubbles. That's kind of interesting. Bubbles forming on our leaf. Hmm. I wonder why those bubbles are forming. Well, let's talk about it. Those bubbles were actually evidence of the leaf breathing. Here's what the leaf looks like in a pretty strong camera. Again, you can see those bubbles forming. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's talk about this with humans because easiest to compare it to ourselves. All right, now let's imagine that it is a hot summer day outside and you're headed to the pool. You hold your breath and go underwater, and then you start to breathe out. What would you see forming? That's right, bubbles. Well, those bubbles that are coming from your mouth are bubbles of carbon dioxide. With the leaf, it's bubbles of oxygen. It's going through that photosynthesis process and releasing the oxygen that it doesn't need, just like our bodies are releasing the carbon dioxide that we don't need. So again, just like we breathe, our leaves breathe too. Pretty cool. All right, now, last ingredient is sunlight. 
Now, sunlight's really important, and you can always test this by trying to grow a plant in your closet. I don't think it will work, but try it anyway. Now, instead of doing an experiment about light, because it takes a little bit of time, I'm gonna show you a really cool video. In this video, pay attention to the movement of the plants. What happens to the plants over time? Let's take a look. notice happened with those plants? Did you see they started to move over time towards the window? Well, that's because the sunlight is coming towards the window. Plants need sunlight in order to grow, in order to go through photosynthesis, and so they will move towards the sunlight. There's a really cool experiment you can do at home to test this out, and that is building a plant maze. Try and build a maze out of cardboard boxes and cardboard and plant a seed at the bottom. Cut a hole at the top for the sunlight to sneak in and see how the plant grows around the maze to get to the sunlight. Really cool. All right, now it's time for a new segment I like to call Quiz Time! I love to quiz Dr. Marbles and see if he was actually paying attention. So let's see if he remembers these things from today's episode. Hey, Dr. Marbles! Hey! Quiz time! You? Quiz time! Now, Dr. Marbles and everyone at home, Play along and let's see if you remember what we learned about today. Okay. Here we go. Question number one. True or false, plants are living organisms. What do you think, Dr. Marbles? No doubt about it. Let's true. see. True! You're right. Plants yeah, true. Are living organisms. We saw they, that today. Yeah. Well, they're living organisms because they grow. Right. They reproduce. Right. And they respond to things in their environment, like you said with the sun. That's exactly right. Plants are kind of like humans in that way. We also saw plants taking in water, just like humans take in water. Yep. They have like problem. straws inside. That's right. You are paying attention. Nice job. Of course. Question number two. You ready? Let them roll. Here we go. Plants like eating hamburgers. What do you think? That's a funny question. <laughs> Did you ask if Dr. Marbles likes hamburgers? Well, I'll, yeah, sure. What do, you, do you like hamburgers, Dr. Marbles? Mm, I'd rather eat plants. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer to your hand like is hamburgers? false. They don't eat hamburgers because of what we've been learning about. They use photosynthesis. Yes! You're right! Exactly. They make use photosynthesis to make their own food, to make that glucose. All right. Last question, Dr. Marbles. Are you ready? This one's hard. Let them roll! What are the three ingredients in photosynthesis? Hmm. Think about the experiments we did today. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. Sun. Uh, Oops, I gave you. Water. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew it. I knew it. And, oh yeah, the super cool carbon dioxide. Let's see. Let's see. Water. Water. Sun. Sun. And carbon dioxide. Yeah! Nice job. Love this game. Very cool. Well, you did pretty well. I'm pretty impressed. Thanks. Very cool. All right, well, the last section that I wanted to show you guys is talking to an expert. I actually got the chance earlier this week to sit down with an, an evolutionary biologist, which is super cool. She studies the way that plants change over time and adapt or change to their environment and the condition that they're living in. She actually works at the Arnold Arboretum, Arboretum it's a hard word to say, in Harvard University. And so, um, yeah, she was really cool. And I'd love to show you our conversation. Does that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Hi, Hannah. 
uh, and everyone. Uh, I'm Samriddhi. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the Arnold Arboretum and the Department of Organismal and Evolutionary Biology um, at, the Har at Harvard University. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about butterflies, plants, and everything in between, which kind of encapsulates my research uh, so far and uh, actually what I do in real life. Um, I'm a scientist and I study evolutionary biology. Uh, those are two big heavy terms, but I, I hope these pictures sort of tell you how much fun it is and it's not all that heavy. Um, I, as an evolutionary biologist, what I study is how natural populations react to changing environmental pressures or how they adapt to new environments. Um, so what I'm showing over here is sort of a snapshot into my life. Uh, I study evolution in natural populations. So what that involves is me, you know, hiking in the mountains. You can see me there in the left, uh, the first picture where I'm just, you know, in these mountains with this butterfly net. Um, where we catch butterflies um, to study. We catch several populations of butterflies. So per day, every day, I would wake up in the morning, go up the mountains, collect 50 butterflies, and then come home, label them, store them in a freezer for DNA extraction, and then chill. Um, so that is one part. The other part uh, is me going to Texas where I'm sitting in between all these wildflowers. So you'll see the yellow ones, the red human in between is me and all the pink uh, uh, points and all the pink plants that you see are, um, are the phlox flowers. And these are the flowers I study. So we spent some time in Texas, the entire range of Texas, just driving around and pulling out these plants from roadsides. And we collect those plants, we collect the seeds, and then we bring those seeds back to the lab. And then we grow them in the lab in just the picture you can see, which is in the lab. Those are all the flocks which I collected from the wild. And now I'm growing them in the lab. Um, and so I take these plants and I pick out specific regions of the plant, specific tissues, and then I do some lab work or molecular work with some chemicals and you know some uh, specific uh, equipments. Um, and then I extract DNA. So as an evolutionary biologist, I study evolution. I work in the wild and collect natural populations. I bring them back to the lab, do experiments with them. Um, I do lab work where I uh, specifically extract DNA or RNA from these organisms. And then I do a lot of computational work. And so it's a combination of all these skills. And it's actually quite exciting because you're not just stuck in front of the computer all the time. And so my... I think the last question which Hannah asked me was, uh, what would I like to tell these young learners? And my answer to that is that science is for everyone. I didn't grow up in a science family. I, no one close to me is in science, but I had one uncle who was in the forest services in India. And I remember him taking me to the forest while he was uh, you know, uh, trying to show us around. And I, I saw a tiger in the wild, which is a rare luxury now. I don't think you can do that. And the way we were there in the middle of the forest just camping, it kind of made me very, very attracted to wildlife. I think everyone can become a scientist, especially young girls. We need more of them in the field. And it is... Not, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't get bogged down by you know, the complexity of science because once you start doing it, you realize it's beautiful and it's for everyone, every single person. And you know, if you have that fascination, you just have to chase the idea and you'll, you'll do it. Really cool. I'm so glad I got to talk to Simriti because she had so much to say and all of her work is so interesting. Let's see what Dr. Marbles learned. Hey, Marbles. Hi, Hannah. How, what did wow. you think? What did I think? What, what Sanriti does is so cool. I was, I'd be honest with you, I was so touched by the work. I mean, to spend her time understanding how plants and environments and flowers and adapt and change to be in harmony with their environment is just amazing. And 
those pictures of being in those flowers in those fields. I want a new job. I know. She just kept saying that she basically loves her job and she really feels like herself when she's at work because there's just like, it, it, there's so many components to it. And she's able to go out and pick flowers and then come back and do some lab work. And it's just, it seems so interesting. So cool. Well, I'll tell you a couple things that I learned from this episode. And Hannah, thanks for having me again. As always. So here's one thing. You mentioned oxygen and carbon dioxide. And I really think it's amazing how what we breathe in is what trees and plants breathe out. Yes. So what they don't need, we need. And what we don't need, they need. Yeah. And it, it kind of means that we need each other. And that kind of partnership and kind of symbiosis mm -hmm. of two organisms, humans and plants, is really amazing and pretty beautiful. And I guess the other thing I would say is that knowing that, it just makes me really grateful for trees. And it makes me really grateful for the earth because we need it. Yeah, exactly. So, Hannah, I love this episode. And I, I just had so much fun. Yeah, me too. It was really cool. I've liked the last couple episodes. We've really been able to experiment with our surroundings, right? We went to the ocean. We went to uh, the rock formations outside. And now we're focusing on plants. Totally. And, and I love the gag about the shark in the beginning, that there was a shark. <laughs> oh, you still don't believe us, do you? Uh, sure I do. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, I hope you get that settled by next week. Uh, and for now, this has been another episode of... SCFG Live. Thank you so much, everyone. If you want to learn more and support, go to scienceclipforgirls.org. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.